All right. Welcome to Winterview Series 3, Episode 3. I am your host, Catherine Silva, Cat for short, and it is a unicorn day. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it's a day that only occurs once every four years, like unicorns do, I'm told. Uh, I'm talking about February 29th, which is a leap day. And our guest this evening is the spectacular Micah Castle. And our subject is weird fiction or new weird. Uh, how are you doing, Micah? Doing good. How about you? I'm pretty good. It's been it's been a fulfilling day. Lots going on. Um, but uh, I will also say that we're having a pretty amazing windstorm right now. So in the event that we that I drop out uh that may be the reason it's been going on since yesterday morning we've had gusts of up to 50 miles an hour so there is that chance just to throw it out there um but I do want to uh jump right in with the first question about weird fiction, uh, which is defining weird fiction. Um, everywhere that I looked seemed to have a different definition for it. Um, one particular website said weird fiction is numinous. It's a fun $10 word, meaning arouses spiritual or religious emotion, mysterious or awe-inspiring, or appealing to the aesthetic sensibility. Um, in your in your lovely expertise, Micah, how would you define weird fiction? It's kind of hard to define. It's almost like you know it when you see it. Um, it's kind of like the old slogan they do with like porn. Like you know it's porn once you see it, but like you can't really define it. Um, I usually describe it more like speculative fiction where it just kind of blends literary with odd things. It could be ghosts, it could be psychological, it could be cosmic, it could be it could be anything really. Um because I've read horror, that's weird, and I've read literary that's just weird. Um so yeah, it's just hard to define. Yeah sort of fits into our, our first episode this season was all about uh, horror that blended genres and weird fiction seems to be a very blended together um, genre. Uh, I did see something about new weird horror being being kind of like fantasy and science fiction and horror all mixed together. Um, so maybe that's the just sort of a good general term for it. Um, but not all of it's like that too. So that makes it kind of difficult to define. Yeah. It's just like a, it's a catch all essentially. The catch all. Yeah. If you're not sure what it is, it's probably weird fiction. Yeah. But usually it's like advertises like literary horror or speculative fiction most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, there is, there was a point in my, when I was writing down questions where I was like, it kind of sounds like cosmic horror, but then cosmic horror is also different. So I had a note about that here, but it's not, this. it's definitely not cosmic horror either. Um, but it, it does sort of, there is, there's an umbrella, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah. And it can all fall together. Um, what was your introduction to weird fiction? H.P. Lovecraft. I think that's like a lot of people. When I read his stuff for the first time, it like blew my mind. Like this stuff could be written like this. And then... After that, I just kind of read anything I can get. Um, 
Yeah. That was only like 10 years ago, though. I was pretty late into the game. But that's that's okay, though. It's like when you discover it, you discover it. And it's... Uh, was it kind of like a life-changing, like, whoa, this is really awesome. I love this. I want to write this. Yeah, it's basically what made me get into writing. Because, I mean, I, lo I love horror, but it's not, it doesn't, like, it doesn't tickle me like weird fiction does. And, um, yeah, I was like, this is amazing. And then you read other authors, and they're like, you don't even know how they're even doing the things they're doing in work, in fiction. And then you just want to do more. Mm hmm what would your what was your first like what was your first work that you put out that had a uh a weird fiction vibe the first one was probably the stone man that was essentially a lovecraft ripoff um it came out in 2015 on sugar.net for free i did not get paid uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then uh, since then, you you have in it in your bio that you write weird fiction. So it's certainly you've written other things that have definitely been inspired by that. Can you tell us and the the viewers what else you've you've worked on? Well, besides weird fiction, I mainly just like kind of write horror or some crime stuff. Uh, I've written one detective novella that's just sitting there because I there's no market for that. Uh, or I've wrote a bunch of horror books, stories, and stuff. Um, I just finished one up that's like a crime horror. Mm -hmm. Nice. Just, just the two guys. One's the killer. One's affected by the killer um the one book coming out next year the woman without eyes is uh Ooh, okay. crime noir kind of cosmic um yeah that one i wrote that one back until like 2017 so it's been a bit um but it stayed with you clearly yeah i've worked on it a lot over the years like i'll put it down for like a year or two and then i'll think i'll have a good idea and then mm -hmm. I'll just rework it and then keep submitting it. Um, it's just going to be weird when people read that after reading um, The World He Once Knew, because I wrote the, the World He Once Knew in like 2021. 20, so okay. my writing's way different than it was then and now. So. Um, speaking of The World He Once Knew, which. I got to read earlier this year and it was very fun. Uh, definitely a mixture of some science fiction, some weird fiction, definitely some grief horror, which of course is my, my lovely spot right here in my chest to love it. Um, let's talk about that book in particular, because that is the most recent publication um, that came out at the end of January. And can you tell us about your inspiration for that one? That one's a bunch of different things. Uh, mainly it was like Dead Space. The way I pitched it was Dead Space meets Annihilation. Um, that was my pitch. That's basically where how it came to be. Um, the extra stuff that kind of comes in through it, like the the subplots throughout the book that I'm not going to spoil. Um, those, I want to say they probably got influenced by like Possessor, the movie Possessor or. Yeah. Um, yes. It's such a good movie. It also was inspired by a lot of different things. I didn't even know at the time, like, um, like, uh, fuck, what was it? Alien. I didn't, I didn't make the connection with the alien or, like Ghost in the Shells also kind of like it. Yeah. There's just things I was like, there's a lot of inspirations in it that I didn't know going into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, that's, that's kind of what happens with writing a project is you don't, some people have their whole thing written down. They know exactly what they're doing. And then there are those who sort of do the pantser move and you, you pull from everything and you never really know what's going to give you inspiration. Um, how did you start that? Was it a concept like with a character or was it more of a plot? Um, I actually wrote a big timeline for this on my Patreon. So I'll just go like to the notes real quick. Yeah. Um, Cause I had like the idea already like set in my head of the end of it. Usually if I have okay. an end of a story, I can kind of like work towards yeah, it. Yeah, I do that uh, too. If I don't, I just kind of go until I waste, I just basically waste a bunch of time. <laughs> um, the note was investigator in parentheses, futuristic, is sent to look into an abandoned ship that was meant to arrive on whatever day. Creepy, Lovecraftian. Story changes from his POV and the crew through video logs and security footage found. Clones MC from detectives who committed suicide. Cheaper. MC sarcastic. Gives comedic bent. So if you read the book, a lot of that did not, was not in the book. <laughs> um, like the video logs and stuff, that's not that's not in it. Um, had you seen Altered Carbon? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was, I read the book. Yeah, okay. that was definitely an inspiration a little bit. Um because the the mind jumping thing. Yeah, yeah, that definitely um popped into my head when I was reading it. It's not I haven't read the book. I have started watching the TV series. Um, and it just, yeah, I was like, ooh, I like this. This is this is a fun, fun take here. Yeah, it was fun writing it. Especially when everything kind of clicked at the end. Because the ending mm -hmm. changed a lot. Um, like the final, like I had the twist, but I didn't have the, the reveal, I guess. Because mm -hmm. um, there's like three stories kind of going on at once at the same time. Nice, nice. Yeah. You twisted it all together. Um, how long did it take you to write it? Uh, about, I would say two years. It could be longer, two or three. What year is it? 2024. So, <laughs> I had the notes in 2021. Um, yeah, it got picked up faster than I thought since other works usually take years and that one took only like a year. Okay. Yeah, I, I wrote it in like 21. It got picked up in 2022. Nice. Yeah. And then it finally comes out in 2024. So, yeah. And was that one that you had, um, you'd sent it into a bunch of people or did you kind of have in mind who you wanted to? I, I really didn't submit it that much. I was hoping it was going to go to like, like I'm happy it came with Federal They've done really well with it. Um, but like I had them in mind and like Tenebris. And I think I submitted it to like... I can't remember the cost. There's like a French press. Press? Yeah. One of them. French they declined press. it. Um, Tenebris was shortlisted. Uh, and then I just did a pit dark, and that's how I found Fedor. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those are the events that I've always wanted to do, but I never have anything ready for them when they happen. So um, that is really exciting to know that they do work, you know. Yeah, once do... in a while. Yeah. <laughs> once in a while, yeah. Yeah. Here's um, my next question. Um, so we do, this is a little bit of a departure from the 
topic of new new horror, but your recent book also falls into the grief horror <laughs> umbrella because that that seems to be a theme in all the books so far this uh, this series, yeah. um, and it seems like grief horror is definitely a a popular genre right now. Uh, even next week's guest is also hitting the grief horror. Um, was that something that you had planned on when you were writing it from the beginning or was that, did that just kind of like merge into it like some other things? Well, with the ending in mind, I kind of knew it was going to be sad. Uh, I didn't really have the, the flashbacks like planned out. Um, I just know I did not want to do uh, like a work versus wife thing. Cause that's mm -hmm. done a lot with like detective stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a lot of my work, I mean, the new stuff I've been writing for like the last couple of years, it's very, I would say it's very melancholy, sad, mm -hmm. it's basically grief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just my older stuff is like, I guess I was still trying to like find my way, I guess. Um, or find my voice. Well, that's the thing is, it takes a long time to figure out sometimes what's your thing. Um, and sometimes it also takes like a ton of books <laughs> before you you realize, oh yeah, this is a recurring theme in all my stuff. Maybe this natural. is to go that way for me i'm just like a basically i've been a sad boy all my life so <laughs> kind of perfect there's there is something i don't know what it is for for me i like i'm just drawn to it i like the sad stuff i don't know if it's the same with you but i just like it makes you feel something it does yeah it does um and twisting that with weird fiction is is a really cool take also just making it like um all the feels you get kind of the, the squirmy feel of the the new fiction and then the the really deep heavy feels of the grief horror um which leads me to my next question which which is going to be what are some of your favorite examples of grief not grief sorry your favorite examples of uh weird fiction that's a long list uh i'd say okay let's say just recently i read joe R. Co joe Koch's collection that's coming out later this year i think it's called invaginaries i'm assuming he mm. just merged vagina and imagine together <laughs> um that's very weird um but really really good very like very sexual very sad and very just i, I described it as meaty essentially there's just a lot of gore but gotcha. like beautifully kind of like exquisite corpse okay um, besides that i read kyle winkler's grass hands which is good it falls more like on fantasy weird i would say it kind of reminded me of a, like a neil gaiman book gotcha okay yeah. uh gwendolyn keist's new book coming out the belkwood haunting of belkwood that's like a combination of personally it was like it was like annihilation but like a ghost story so it hmm. wasn't just like a house it was a neighborhood um, okay that comes out next week i think or whenever this releases comes out first week of march i think yeah. okay um what else have i i can't even let's take a look let me look at my good reads yeah um i'll throw one out there have you read help meet yeah it's... i read that last year that was very good yeah so um that is one that i i hadn't thought would be defined as a weird horror but it definitely is and um it is probably one of the scariest things that i have read 
and it is just so well executed. Um, I'm definitely putting that up there as something that our watchers should check out. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was, I didn't expect that to be as good as it was. Like, I expected it to be good, but like, yeah. Uh, besides that stuff, I just been, I've been reading a lot of magazines. So, like, Undertow's Weird Whores, perfect. If you're into like anything weird fiction, they're great. Same with like Tales from Betweens magazines and little collections, those are really good. Same, uh, Tenebrous's split screen series, also very good. Uh, actually, if you like weird fiction, you should just read Tenebrous Press. Anything mm -hmm. they put out is weird. So, um, Michael Wee Hunt's Inconsolables, mm -hmm. my favorite collection in the last couple of years. Okay. All right. And the list go. Yeah, the list can go on forever. <laughs> Um, any like films or, uh, I don't know if you're a gamer or not, but anything that, that might fall into that weird horror. I'm one of those weird ones that don't, I don't really watch movies too often. I mean, I used to play games a lot, but I don't really play them anymore. Um, okay. Movies wise, I think the last thing that would fall, I guess, in my personal opinion, weird would probably be like. The Lobster. I forget who directed that. Um, yeah. And directed that one I think my heart, I think it's my heart can't beat unless you tell it to, mm. which is like very melancholy, very grief. Um, it's very like, uh, if you read Scott J. Moses's Our Own Unique Affliction, his mm -hmm. novella, it's very like that. Um, okay. Very good. Game wise, I just draw a lot of inspiration from basically Bloodborne. Yeah. <laughs> essentially, <laughs> I pull a lot. Yeah. Because it's Bloodborne's like a masterpiece. Yeah, that that's very like in the realm of it's definitely weird and it's definitely gothic. Um, like it definitely has that gothic vibe. Um. But yeah, Bloodborne, Dark Souls, that that whole um, style of game is very difficult, but also just the entire world is so well created. Yeah, I love how they tell stories basically through like atmosphere and that like they don't tell you the story. You have to like learn it and you learn it as you go. I would really love how to do that in a book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just very difficult without the game element of picking up items and stuff. I wonder if you could do a um, like a choose your own adventure deal. Yeah. I don't That's see very cool. many of those anymore. No, I think the last ones were like that one publisher had a like. I forget what it's called. They're like, like in a series. I know Duncan Ralston was in it. Where it's mm -hmm. like a choose your own adventure horror thing, but they each chose like a setting, essentially. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that would be cool too if we got like a proper, like weird one. Mm hmm. Maybe one day. <laughs> Put it on the list for things to do. Yeah. Um, you'd mentioned that you, you had some things that you were currently working on. Um, would you, if you want to, I'm not going to, you know, press you for details, but, um, would you mind telling folks about what, what that was again? Well, I'm always... I'm always working on something. Uh, I found a system about like a year or two ago, really when the pandemic kind of hit, I found a system that worked where I can like, I can turn them out pretty good. Not that like I'm quickly just doing it, but like I found an exact process that works really well. Um, so right now 
Um, I just finished up second draft, a, a second draft of, I think I called it the malignancy he needs. I think that's what it's called. That's mm. the crime one where it's like, there's this killer who has to kill people and collect like mementos for this demon who then gives him pills who can then so he can then see his like family again okay and the other pov is a widow made by the killer so the story mm -hmm. just goes like him trying to figure out who he is and him trying to figure mm -hmm. out and deal with this demon guy and then eventually you know things cross and that happens and then okay things go down that's the, nice yeah Currently, I'm working on turning a short story into a novelette called All Off's Ossuary. Uh, basically, it's just going to be a story framing like three other stories, kind of like that one Black Mirror episode. Um, okay. It's called Black Carnival or something. Uh, before that, I don't even... For that, I think I was working on uh, a vampire humor horror novel about this vampire who can't drink blood because the blood's so polluted now. So he oh. has to like, filter stuff to drink the blood. But then he has a friend who like just kind of hangs around with him. Later on in the story, then he like learns that there's a way he can probably get it fixed. Like he can get something installed or something in his body. So he goes and meets this guy, gets installed. It's great for like a week, and then soon he finds out he can't drink blood at all anymore. Period. Okay. Um, and then the story continues on. Um, okay. Vampires are definitely making a uh, a comeback here seeing more and more vampire stuff so that's... yeah i'm hoping it stays when i can put because i have another vampire novella up but that's like it's a sci-fi see if, yeah it's like a sci-fi vampire novella um three povs hunter okay. a junkie and the vampire and worlds collide and it's a bunch of it's a yeah Nice. You got all kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm always working on something. Um, so when you're when you're working, are you working on like all of these things at once? No, I go one at a time. I go like my system is I outline it, and then I then go write a first draft of another book. And after I do that, I revise another book. And then I basically just cycle that until one's done. And then I just replace that one with something else that I've been working on. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's a lot. Well, I always say I'm like writing against death. So <laughs> like I have to get these things done. Yeah. Is it like... When you're putting stuff out there, is it just this this compulsion to like you need to do it for you, for your own sort of well being? Or is it more of a like I really want to connect with people. This is out there for somebody. I want them to find it and and read it and get something from it. Or is it a combination of both? I feel like it has to be both. I mean, I love writing. I love the process. I love making the stories and figuring out how to make it work the best it can and that stuff. And it's cool for readers to read it and get something out of it. Um, Cause that's, that's weird to me personally. Like you write something and someone else reads it and they're like, they're like affected by it somehow. And you're like, I just, I just type on a keyboard. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's basically just me. I need to get everything out of my head. And unfortunately, we have only like a limited amount of time here. So I just write as much as I can. Yeah. 
what is your preferred note taking method? Do you actually write things down on little pieces of paper or do you, you do it all on like Scrivener or? I use an application, an app called Google keep. Um, it just Google's like no app. Um, it's on everything. So that makes it very easy. Uh, the voice section is good. So I can just say gibberish into it and it kind of gets it. Um, it also has a lot of good label. You can put labels on it, and I have everything organized like book ideas or ideas that are just ideas, but there's no story, or there's just I have just titles that I like. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, cool, nice. Yeah. Um, are you the kind of person that listens to music when you write? No, nah, I like dead silence. Total silence. All right. I can do that occasionally, but even if like even if there's just like some ambient noise in the background, I've gotta have something. Yeah, I'm the same way with reading. Like I have to have dead silence when I'm reading. Or my like my mind will then attach to the to whatever's going on outside of reading mm -hmm. and then I can't pay attention. Okay. Yeah. Um have more questions. Let me think. Uh, well, here's here's a good one. What did you do today? <laughs> how, how, how did you spend yeah. your leap day? Uh, unfortunately, my life is very routine and very the same thing every single day. So my daily stuff is what I did yesterday and what I'll do tomorrow. It's just you know, I just do stuff around the house, write, read, take care of the animals, sleep, <laughs> look for jobs. Uh, Sounds, yeah. yeah. The animals. I want to know more about the animals. They're a hassle. Uh, we have <laughs> two dogs. Currently have three because we're watching one. Three ferrets and a cat. Oh man. Oh, ferrets. They're, they're... they're I've had we've had them for like like 12 years. Not the, these ones, wow. but my mom had ferrets, so I kind of been around forever. We have a system down that they're not even the problem. It's really just the one dog. Um gotcha. She's 16 years old. She's old. She's on a bunch of medication. She is needy mm -hmm. and picky and whines if she doesn't get her way. Yeah. So it's like having a baby, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> but you she's also still her. doing really well, surprisingly. Okay. Because they like heart failure. She got she has congestive heart failure. Oh, and they usually give dogs like nine months to live with that. And she's been alive for like three years yeah. since then. Um Okay, defying the expectations. Yeah, I say she's going to live forever, essentially. Yeah. And the cat is the easiest animal of them all, wherever she is. Mm -hmm. She just kind of, she meows a bunch and uh, that's about it. <laughs> um, I have a ferret story. It's not not like an in-depth ferret story, but I had a friend who had a ferret when I was a kid, Buddy the ferret. And the one time that I went over to their house to, to hang out, the ferret got stuck behind the washing machine. And it, we were probably in third grade. We were not strong children. So trying to move the washing machine out of the way to get to the ferret proved to be a couple hours of struggle. Um, but it, it, you know, it was an adventure and eventually it came out, but it did not make it easy for us. Yeah, ferrets are not pets that you can, um, like I see people get ferrets, like as a starter pet or something. It's just like... Yeah. 
You they're can't like go into that. that. Yeah, you can't go into that assuming that it's going to be easy. Same with um, chinchillas. We used to have a chinchilla. Mm -hmm. um, he died a, a bit back, but... Aww. Yeah, ferrets are... You have to watch them. Uh, they like getting into things that they're not supposed to. Yes, mischievous. Yeah. Um, I live vicariously through a YouTube channel that has a chinchilla as their main star. It's just that's about as close as I'll as I'll get because I probably don't have the responsibility or the uh, wherewithal to care for one. Yeah, they're very specific with <laughs> everything. Like, yeah, there's certain kind of foods and big enough cage and dust and stuff. Um, returning to our, so we did a little bit of a departure. Returning to the conversation of weird fiction. Besides doing something like a, a choose your own adventure is there anything that you would like to see somebody do it for a weird fiction or a new weird book or movie like a concept that you haven't seen before i also don't have one because i feel like if there's something i want to see done i'll attempt to do it at least in book form um but i do have ideas that i would love to see done that i just don't have no use like i have them but they're just like there's no story so they just kind of mm -hmm. sit there gotcha yeah okay yeah the ideas for a future date um i was also going to ask you about your you in your bio it says that you like to hang out in the woods so as a fellow woods hanger outer i respected that um is it a i like to go hiking in the woods i used to hike a lot uh, a couple years ago like i used to go every weekend i live near like a state park um so i would spend a long time there all the time and now i just kind of reside myself to the woods we have at this park nearby uh no yeah i just like being in the woods it just feels uh i guess right it's i don't know how to explain it you just kind of feel like you're meant to be there when you're there yeah a connection and you don't want to leave mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's something to be said for, well, and we, we talked about this last week on Red's episode, but just like getting out in the woods and um, having the freeness of nature, um, just being able to kind of like breathe <laughs> because it's not, you know, you're not at work, you're not at home there, you're not uh, sort of pressed in by all of your, all the things that you have to do um, getting out in the woods kind of lets you escape a little bit. Yeah. Um, we, there is an upcoming horror call for a, uh, publisher that, I feel like I'm self self um, promoting a little bit, but there's an upcoming horror call for a Boreal Forest horror anthology. And I wondered maybe <laughs> if you were going to submit anything for that based on your, your love of the woods. I want to, but I, I have nothing yeah. for it and not even like an idea I can like, get down well gotcha. enough um like i outlined this one book about woods and wood spirits and stuff like that but that's a book uh mm -hmm. 
if you accepted reprints, I probably could have found something, <laughs> but no, I have nothing. Yeah, reprints are a little more tricky to uh, to negotiate. Um, but there's, I think we've uh, we've kind of covered all of my my questions that I had. Um, on new horror and on weird horror or weird fiction. I do, this is, this is where I'm my last question. And I don't, I don't know. You're probably not going to be able to answer this. This is just more of a, this perplexes me is the fact that it's called weird fiction and not weird horror because I, whenever I tried to search for it and the only weird horror I would get would be the undertow, you know, magazine yeah. But the fact that it's called weird fiction, but it's actually horror, like pretty explicitly, it's horror in almost all the cases, does confuse me a little bit. Uh, there's definitely weird fiction that's not horror, because I, I read it, um, so it exists. Usually it's all, yeah, like I said, it's like kind of speculative fiction. It's like very like character driven with some supernatural elements kind of sprinkled in. Um, I think it just groups in with horror so much because you can do so much with horror too. Mm -hmm. uh, also with cosmic horror and Lovecraft stuff and that kind of, Everyone usually thinks weird fiction. They probably would think of like Lovecraft and cosmic horror and stuff. Mm -hmm. When there's just so much more out there. Um, yeah, and... it's it, like it seems to be when I when I went through the list of authors that they're that Wikipedia, of course, lists for weird fiction. There's a lot of like Algernon Blackwood, H.P. Lovecraft, um, a lot of like gothic authors as well um and then you get into the new weird and it's definitely a lot of what i would say cosmic horror authors on that list um so it's just yeah it's it's just interesting to me and it also seems like a lot of the presses that are taking weird fiction are mostly taking the horror bend on weird fiction, but yeah, Undertow. They don't. They do weird horror, but I wouldn't say a lot of it's even horror to me. Um, I guess it'd be closer to like quiet horror, mm -hmm. where it's kind of more spooky and not horror. But like, you know, you're just splitting hairs by that point. Uh, yeah. And then, like, Tales from Tween stuff, they definitely publish just weird stuff. It's not always horror. Um, same with, like, I remember Ghoulish Press, I think, put out Bind, Bound by Flesh, that anthology, like, a year or so ago. And there were a couple of stories in there that was pretty weird, but they weren't really like, horror. Hmm. Um, like, the one, I can't remember her name, but she wrote a story about a guy becoming a worm. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't, I don't remember her name. It's like LC something. She's very, she's very good. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Weird. It's just like, there's so many elements in the story. They'll just like kind of say weird fiction. It kind of makes, it just makes more sense. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of like how people will like genre horror books but they'll call them like thrillers. Yeah. Just to the marketability. Marketing. So like any any mm -hmm. weird fiction that gets like I guess kind of big or more known. It's always gonna be advertised as like horror or sci fi. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, fantasy. And now yeah. like literary horror is kind of becoming a thing which some people don't like but yeah yeah it's it's um 
Oh, the evolution of horror and the acceptability of it um, in the literary world has always been an issue that I've been frustrated with. Um, but I will say that in terms of how it used to be 10, more than 10 years ago, almost 15 years ago now, compared to how it is now, it seems to be so much better now. People seem to accept it so much more, even if they don't understand it. Um, it's, it's just like, there's a lot more of it too. There's a lot more voices, newer voices coming out. Um, so it's, I, I think that we're at a point, I hope, where like horror books are winning national book awards that are not horror based. Like we're definitely at a point where it's being seen as literature and not genre fiction. Yeah. And that's, I never, yeah. I never got genre fiction and literary fiction because they're both both fiction and they're both genres. Yeah. So yeah, I never never understood that either. Especially when there's a lot of a lot of horror is mostly just character driven stuff. Um, yeah. and literary fiction is essentially that. Yeah. Minus supernatural. Yeah. It's there's a classism, I think, you know, it's just there's definitely a um or there was anyway. It lingers in places, but there's definitely a like we don't we don't want the, um, we don't want to call it horror. We, you know, so if you, if you want to call it horror, if it's too, uh, grotesque, if it's too, uh, brutal, then, you know, we're, we're not really going to accept it in the literary genre. But, but again, that seems to be changing now for the better. So that's, yeah, it might just be the bubble I'm in, but I don't, I feel like there's more genre readers than like I, than literary fiction readers. It could just be the bubble, but I mean, I feel like there's a lot more readers reading supernatural books mm -hmm. than straight, I guess, real books. But who knows? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good literary it's, fiction too. So yeah. there is. It's it's hard. Um, but like when you when you're seeing the crossovers of um, the the big books that are selling that do have a supernatural or um, horror bend to them, it's it's nice anyway. It's it's good to feel like um, things are changing. The mentality is changing, um, and that some of those national book lists that just come out that are just full on literary fiction uh, are now at least having some smattering of horror or horror adjacent works on them. So. Yeah. I feel like Stephen Graham Jones is kind of like carrying the torch. He's, the he's definitely carrying the torch. Um, Morgan Talty, who is a main author who won like a bazillion awards last year for his book um, is also doing a, a pretty good job. And then of course, a lot of people who have won Stoker awards in the last couple of years are, are paving the way too. So it's, yeah, it's nice. It's good to see it. Um, and makes room for, you know, makes it easier for, people like us to to get our stuff out there and uh widens the net so yeah a little bit more just a sliver of more hope that you can yeah. you can turn this into like an actual career and yeah. uh, live like it was the good old days back yeah. in like the <laughs> horror boom in like the 80s yeah well things come in cycles so hopefully yeah. It's coming again. Yeah. Um, 
So before we, before we sign off, I did want to ask if you wouldn't mind letting our viewers know where they can find you, where the best places to find you are, and where the best places to uh, pick up your books might be. Best places to find me would probably be Twitter, which is like at Micah underscore Castle, or Facebook, which is, I think, Micah Castle author. Um, I have a website micacastle.com, which will pretty much bring you everywhere you need. My books are all on Amazon, so Amazon's probably the best bet. Um, unfortunately, yeah, that's, that's the only really avenue to get the books right now. Well, it's easy. You know, guys can find it. Um, all these links will be in the video once it gets put up on YouTube. Uh, that should be over the weekend, so... For those who may have missed the video this evening, your opportunity is coming. No worries. You can catch it on my author page on Facebook, which is at katherinesilva.author, uh, and then you'll be able to get it on YouTube this weekend. So with that, thank you, Micah, for coming on the, it's not really a podcast, the show this evening. Um, to talk about weird horror and to talk about all the different writerly things uh, that you do. And um, yeah, it was it was fun. We've interacted a lot over the last few years, but we've never actually talked in person. So this was really nice. Not many have. Uh, <laughs> this is probably the first interview podcast I've been on. Oh, well, you did awesome. Yeah, there was, thank you. yeah. Um, and I, f I feel distinguished. <laughs> like I got, I got a special treat for getting to have you on first. So. It's possible. It could be the only time ever yeah. I do it. So who knows? This will be one of those lost interviews that, uh, you'll refer to like 10 years in time and it will be like hard to find uh, possibly haunted piece of media. Someone could write a book about that. So that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Just, just here to give ideas. Um, next week on Winter Views, we will be talking to Chad Lutsky. Uh, that will be March 7th. Uh, our subject will be coming of age horror, which we've done a couple times here on the program. Um, I know we talked about it last year and we talked about it in the first series with Tom Deedy. Um, and we'll be talking about his recent book which is bruises on a butterfly i think it's just bruises on a butterfly and not bruises on a butterfly wing but um currently reading it very excited about it uh we will talk all about that next week but for this evening we are all set thank you for joining us and i hope that you all have a good night <laughs>